several times, so I'm actually more comfortable preaching on the streets. Um, but I love I love teenagers. I, I requested that guy would fill the room with teenagers. So here you are. Yay! Yay for you! <laughs> yeah. Um, I like teenagers because, uh, you know, I can be real, you know, a lot of times the older people, they're just, uh, they're just staring at you, you know, and they're waiting on you to say something stupid to say, yeah, see, I knew God wasn't with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Teenagers are just like, yeah, tell us something else. Tell us, you know. Not that teens don't get bored. I mean, you guys still, uh, still, you know, talk, talk, uh, as a friend. You know, I know you guys want to hear real people, and and you don't want me to uh, um, be a jerk or uh, somebody that's telling you a bunch of bull. <laughs> um, I live in my car. Did you guys get some kind of flyer about me or no? Or did, what'd you hear about me? Just curious. Anybody heard anything? Just woman preacher. What'd you tell them? Just come hear the woman. <laughs> How did you guys get here? You just wanted to come for you Indian food. We, <laughs> we picked up. No, I'm serious. Did, did you guys? You don't know I preached in an Easter Bunny suit or anything? <laughs> okay. Huh? They, there's a surprise for them at the end of the show. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> she bribed them. Huh? She bribed them. She, oh, you bribed them. Okay. okay. Hey, it works, you know. Uh, there's a church in Florida that uh, had an awesome revival for five years. And uh, parents would say, uh, if you come to Pensacola, Florida, I'll take you to the beach. Uh, but you, there's this one catch. you got to go to church with me. Well, it's not just the normal church. It was a church in revival, and people would wait in line up to 12 hours a day just to get in. So as a teenager, you're thinking, yeah, the beach, but the parents are going, oh, just wait till a guy gets a hold of you. <laughs> because let me tell you, you can't walk in there and not go, God is here. You know what I mean? It was like one of those churches. And uh, I just got through writing about a chapter in the book. I mean, there's a difference in church, and then there's a church on fire. You know, a church. Uh, and, and that what we want. I mean, if God is real, you know, uh, let, him, let him make himself real to me. I don't want him just to hear about he's real to you. I want God to come to me, you know. Uh, one of the things Elijah said as a prophet was, uh, the God that answers by fire, he is God. <laughs> you know, that's what the false... Uh, well, there was a, like an Elijah showdown. And there was these false prophets versus Elijah, Okay. And uh, he was a little cocky, whatever, but he wanted to prove that God was real to these uh, these false prophets. So he kept pouring water on wood. Well, how do you get water on wood to light, you know? Um, well, with God, all things are possible. So he proved God was real to these people. But see, he knew he had a word. He knew that God was with him. So when we step out, uh, and try to do exploits for God, we got to know that God is with us. And uh, that's kind of where I'm going tonight. Um, I'm going to talk about Jeremiah. You know, I, I was going to talk about just the word why. Like, why serve God? Why should I preach the gospel? Why should I listen to you? <laughs> why should I come to church? Uh, well, why not come to church? Uh, why not trust God? Why not test and see if He's good? Why not check Him out? Check His credentials. Um, I, uh, 
I'm waiting on the Lord before I actually start because I want to be prophetic. I want to have a word. I want to have a word from the Lord for you guys. And uh, I was going to talk about, like I said, uh, the word wine. And I googled the word wine the other day to see what would pop up. And four things popped up. One was, why is the sky blue? One was, uh, why, uh, I can't remember all of them, but I can tell you the fourth one. Why is my poop green? <laughs> that, I mean, there are people with closet problems out there, and they're like, I don't know who to ask. So I'll ask you, Google. Google, help me. You know? <laughs> My God is more available than Google, okay? <laughs> Write that down. Very important. Okay. I'm just going to get into the Word. Uh, let me describe a little bit about who I am so you'll understand why I'm going to talk about Jeremiah. Uh, I used to be an alcoholic, a drug addict. I was a crack cocaine user. Uh, I used to sell my blood. Why are you smiling? <laughs> I, I used to uh, snort cocaine out of a dollar bill, and uh, I used to uh, smoke crack cocaine, and I used to scratch my arms thinking I had bugs in my skin, and I uh, drove a dealer around. I was, uh, had a kid out of wedlock. When you have sex, it's possible to get pregnant. It is really possible, 100% uh, chance. If you don't have sex, then you don't, no possibility of getting pregnant, and that is very important information too. Um, just, just so. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why, but earlier I was reading, and I was like, "Why am I reading this?" Well, I'm just going to share you. I was sitting in my chair over there, and I read the scripture about flea fornication, you know, and sexual sin, and I'm like, "Why am I reading this?" Well, that, you know, in that particular, uh, fornication is, is sex before marriage. And the Bible is telling us to run from that. You know, not just take a walk in the park, like run from it, get away from it, because uh, it is sin. But marriage, God created sex. And, and within marriage, it is a good thing. But it's, that's, that's where it's protected. That's where it, You'll be okie dokie before God and you won't get all in problems. But uh, I, uh, I had all those problems. I had a kid out of wedlock. I almost aborted my son. And then uh, God saved him. He was, I was $100 short at the clinic. And uh, street preachers outside, I like to tell that part because I believe that that's part of what messed up the machine to where it said I was a different number than I really was as far as weeks. It said I was 15 weeks pregnant. I knew I was 12 weeks. And now my son is 21. He's in college. And uh, he's bald-headed. He shakes his head. So that's, a, that's my boy. I'm proud of him. He's really bald-headed. So here's the deal. Uh, Nicholas means uh, victory of the people. I believe God named him. And uh, that was a complete mess. Um, I cried out to God by my father's Bible. And I said, God, help me. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to go back to church. I hated God. But I knew God was the deliverer. The very name Jesus means uh, Savior. He's the Redeemer. He's, he's awesome. And I'm going to talk a lot about Jesus. Because um, there would be no reason to go to church if it weren't for Jesus. You know, it's, you know that's, that's what it's all about is uh, experiencing God and, and, and knowing God and why we were created. Um, we were created uh, by God to know Him. And that was going to be my original message. Maybe it still is. I don't know. But God wanted relationship. Just like we crave. Hey, can I hang out with you today? I just want to chat with you. I just want to look at you. How you doing? I miss you. That's relationship. You know? And uh, God's like that. He longs to express His love. I mean, God is love. He wants to 
to father us, love on us, spend time with us. And uh, growing up always was not into that. I didn't think that was uh, I didn't think it was obtainable and I didn't really care. <laughs> to tell you the truth. I didn't care because I didn't know what it was. My pastor preached one time with a strawberry and he's like, we've all had strawberries, right? I mean, we know that strawberries are awesome. But try to explain to somebody that's never had a strawberry just how good it is, how juicy, how delicious it tastes. Same with God. That's, that's why he says, taste and see the Lord is good. It's hard to explain what I have now compared to what I thought it would be like knowing God. Well, I had to go way down to look up in desperation for God. That's what it took for me to where I actually needed Him. And then after I needed Him, I wanted Him. And that, oh, that is the beauty of free will. That is the beauty of when you're, you're pursuing somebody and they say, ha, oh, I want you just because I want to be with you. I want to be with you. And the thing is, uh, many times people want to be with somebody for what they can get out of them. See, I wanted God to get me off a of crack, but I didn't want Him to take those six magazines I had under my bed. I didn't want Him to touch my lust problem, but I didn't want Him to. To I didn't. I, I wanted Him to take most of me, but I had secret things in my heart that I didn't want God to touch, and. Uh, I got so sick of my sin because God just kept loving on me and loving on me and loving on me after he got me off drugs. And I got to know him so much through his kindness. I'm so attracted to God because of his kindness. The kindness of God brought me to repentance. I'm not saying it brought me to church. I'm saying that God, the kindness of God brought me to want to know him. My pastor sang a uh, song one time with a guitar. It's like God standing outside your window like a Romeo, like singing you a love song. I love you, I love you, I love you. I'll do anything for your heart. I just want you. And um, there's a place of violence in, in, within God as well because of what he, to demonstrate his love, there's an act of violence that happened on the cross. It's a violent love. It's a fierce love. It's, it's militant. Militant love. It's, it's a war in the enemy. The devil wants to kill us. I mean, he hates us. He tries to destroy us with drugs, alcohol, sex, all these things, and, and put some, all kinds of things, uh, distractions everywhere uh, on TV. I mean, it, I can't imagine being a teenager and fighting the enemy because I know the enemy I fought in the 80s. You, I didn't have the internet back then, you know? If I wanted to get uh, pornography, I had to go buy it. I had to go buy it. And I wasn't old enough to buy it, but now it's just like right there. The enemy's just like, here, just click this mouse, you know? And uh, it, it takes, I know that people struggle with that. And God, I know, can set you free. He has set me free from many uh, lustful desires and uh, sins in my heart. Um, yeah, I'm going to read uh, 1 Corinthians 6 
This is a, a scripture I use a lot on the streets. Um, God uh, called me to be a street preacher after I became a Christian. At first he told me I was going to be a preacher. And I cried two weeks about that every day. Now that was scary enough. But he didn't tell me I was going to be a street preacher. And a street preacher is somebody that stands on, like a, on a, let's say, that street corner right over there and just addresses everybody that's at the stoplight. Well, imagine God telling you to stand up in a restaurant and doing that. Or standing up at the end of a movie and saying, Hey, can I have your attention, everybody? I'd like to practice my freedom of speech right now. I know we got people in the, in the army fighting overseas right now. So I can do this. So I appreciate you letting me use my uh, First Amendment right right now. And everybody's like, well, okay. You know? And then uh, God, that God has asked me to do that several times. And I've preached in Denny's. And stood up and says, uh, right now the Lord wants me to, to speak to every one of you. No need to be alarmed. I uh, just want to talk about Jesus. I want to make sure everybody's right with God tonight. If you were to die tonight, would you go to heaven or hell? And then present the answer. And um, that's what God's called me to do. But not just that. I'm talking about homosexual gay pride marches. I've preached at six of those. And I've had uh, homosexuals make out in front of me. I've had people pour beer on me. I've had uh, people pinch my tushy. And uh, one time... I was preaching in my Easter Bunny costume, and uh, I was witnessing to this girl, and this uh, other girl came by and uh, grabbed both my butt cheeks, squeezed them so hard I lost my breath. And I was like, ow, it really hurt though. I know I'm fat, but still, it hurt. Okay? So, the other girl gave her life to Jesus right there. I mean, she was just like, wow, you're being persecuted, and like, it impact her by that pers uh, persecution that uh, she prayed the sinner's prayer right there. She said, I want to give my life to Jesus. And um, you know, uh, I love it. <laughs> I love to preach. Okay, praise God. First Corinthians 6, 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor uh, adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners uh, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed. You were, uh, you were washed, sanctified, and justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. And I, I use this scripture all the time on the streets because you've got a lot of people that all these things. And the Bible says, use righteous judgment. Okay? People hate to be judged. They absolutely hate it. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Well, I'm kind of commanded to. When my son was uh, growing up, I had to find babysitters. I had to uh, look at a female about your age and I'd say, tell me about yourself. Well, you might not want to tell me about yourself. But if you're going to work for me and watch my most prized possession, Nicholas, I need to know about you. Can I trust you? You know? And I'm going to ask you some things. I've met teenage babysitters that were having sex with the married man and the wife didn't know it was going on. So, I mean, I've seen a lot. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, that wife didn't pick up on that one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's like, I don't trust nobody, so I'm going to be asking, you know? Uh, Jesus said uh, he didn't trust himself to anybody in John 2, 24. Because he knows what's in our hearts. He knows people. You know? So, in the scripture, it says, You are washed, sanctified, and justified in the name of the Lord. 
So when a person is truly born again, they should not be labeled these kind of things anymore. They should be a new creature in Christ. All things pass away because he says, Behold, I make all things new. When you get baptized in baptismal water and you come up, are you still a fornicator? Are you still a drunkard? You, you know what I'm saying? No, we're, we're washed. We're sanctified. God changes us through this Word. Instead of me preaching a great sermon, I would rather connect. You know what I'm saying? I would much rather connect with you guys if you have any for real questions. Because it's not important to me that um, I hit a home run. You know? Um... You guys like Adam Sandler? I like Adam. I've met Adam Sandler. I told him about Jesus. And the reason I told him about Jesus is because he's not saved. I asked him, if you died today, would you go to heaven or hell? He said, I don't know. Now, I like Adam. He's funny. I've seen a lot of his movies. But my pastor taught me when you stand before somebody, don't waste their time. Talk to them about Jesus. Because when we die, we're going to stand before God. We're going to stand before the judgment seat of God. And we're going to give an account for our life, whether we were born again or not. Jesus said you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. God wants to have a relationship with us. He demonstrated His love while we were yet sinners. I told you my sin. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. No greater love than this, than a man should lay down his life for a friend. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. According to the Scriptures, He was buried. He arose again three days later and He was seen by many. But He says in Matthew 24, Prepare. Because you don't know the day or the hour that he's coming back. He said, watch. Watch. Be ready. Any other celebrities? Name I might have met them. Name somebody. Jim Carrey. Nope. Not that one. <laughs> Jeremy Pivens. You heard of him? Entourage, HBO. Spy Kids 4? Yeah. Spy Kids 4? Okay, the mean guy in Spy Kids 4? I preached to him. I told him if he didn't turn, he was going to burn. I did. Why? Because he had a girl in the car and he was fixing that. I could tell. She was, that I felt like they were going to go have sex at a marriage. Just the way he was acting. And I asked him, if you died, would you go to heaven or hell? And he smarted off to me. And uh, I told him to get right with God. That Jesus was the only way he was going to go to heaven. He's Jewish. Now a lot of people that are Jewish get offended by that. But Jesus Christ said this. And I looked Adam Sandler in the eye and I told him the same thing. I said, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through him. And he listened. See, I believe that Jesus is the most important thing. Author and the finisher of our faith, the beginning and the end. And if we don't know when He's coming back, we need to be ready. Without the shedding of blood, I just spit. Wow. Okay, that's cool. I'm spitting preacher, cool. Uh, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. You guys know what that means? Okay. In the Hebrew Scriptures, blood had to be shed for the sins of the Jews to be washed, covered. They used to kill lambs to cover their sins. John the Baptist came along and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Talking about Yeshua, talking about Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So God sent a Lamb. To just one man, sin entered the world. And by one man, 
sin was taken away. That's exciting to me. Jesus Christ is the answer. What do you live for today? I mean, what fires you up? I'm going to give you a five-minute sermon on Jeremiah, okay? Five minutes. Here we go. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth. Just like God said to me, don't say you're a woman. See, I told God, don't call me to preach because uh, I got a business to run. I'm a single mom, and don't I'm a female, you know. And uh, God, when He calls us to do something, He's not He's wanting us to say okay or yes, not give Him excuses. Do not say I'm a youth, for you shall. Uh, go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces. Now see, when I go preach in front of people that are screaming and acting crazy, or even when I meet a celebrity, I've got to be in tune with God and in so much relationship with Him that all I care about is God being happy. More than all those people that got way more money, houses, fame, whatever, who cares? We're all in need of a Savior. We're all in need of the blood of Jesus. And because of that revelation God has given me, I try not to care about people's faces. Like right now. I'm not, you know, trying to be moved by whether y'all are into it or not. I care that I'm connecting with you. I want God to touch your heart. And I really hope that you want God to touch your heart. I can't make you... I used to be a youth pastor. I was a youth pastor about three weeks. <laughs> it didn't last long. But I still love you. I requested that you come. You know, I'm just not a good youth pastor. What I'm good at is actually taking you out and showing you how to preach. I would be way better at that than this. But I love you, and I'm glad you're here. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over nations and over the kingdoms to root out, pull down, destroy, throw down, to build, and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? So there is such a cool connection going on there. And because I live in my car, I've lived in my car about 14 months. And because I live in my car, I like have to have kind of a cool relationship with God. I have to know Him just a little bit enough to know, like, God, do you think this is a good parking place? Is the, the crazy stalker going to get me here? Okay, let's move, you know. So, like, if I don't know his voice, it could be life and death for me. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, oh, there are days I want to go live in Compton and let somebody shoot me. There are days like that. And they, <laughs> God never lets me park in Compton. Although I've been like, God, just kill me. I'm so sick of preaching and, like, I want to get married and just cook steak fajitas. You know, and ride on the back of a Harley with a muscle chips coffee punch. You know, there's days I'd rather do that than preach at homos, you know. Um, 
I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. Okay. Verse 17. Therefore, prepare yourself and arise. Man, that says a lot right there. And that's exactly what God did. He prepared me. God spent years getting me ready for California. Years. I preached 10 years before I moved here. I didn't know when I moved here, I would meet all these different uh, celebrities, preach it. I've preached at two porn conventions. I mean, can you imagine? Uh, it's wild stuff, like standing below these steps, and all these porn stars are going up the steps, and they got to pass me before they get up there to do whatever they're going to do. And I'm like, got this big t-shirt, trust Jesus. And like security is totally kicking it with me going, man, you can stay there. I'm cool with that. And I'm like, excuse me, ma'am. Are you right with Jesus? <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's not time to amen that dog. Hold that applause. Okay. No, seriously. Um, I know they're not right with God. Psst. You know what I mean? <laughs> But there's still porn stars that tell me they are. <laughs> it's like, you know, if you don't want to battle, no, you're not, no, you're not. <laughs> you know, you don't do that. You, you, you be patient with them and, and try to plant more seeds and more of the Word of God. And, and uh, if necessary, say turn or burn. If necessary. You know, because some are saved by love, some are saved by fear. And, uh, you know, I'm the only preacher they might ever have. I mean, they're kind of busy. they got a career. You know. <laughs> okay. One day they had a porn convention right next to a pot convention. And I was just like, in the L.A. Convention Center, okay, which one is the bigger sin, God? Where do you want me to go? <laughs> the park. <laughs> so that's where I went. Went to the porn stars over the pot you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then outside there was a big MTV awards thing. So then you got three choices. And I and I preached to about a thousand of them that day. So it was to God be the glory. He gave me a really loud voice. And I get tired. And there's days I'm hungry when I'm done. There's days I don't have gas money when I'm done. There's days I miss my son. There's days I miss my family. But the thing is, I have a call of God on my life. I, what I'm trying to say is, when Jesus saved me and called me to be a preacher, according to the Bible, according to the Bible, Jesus owns me. He owns me. Like, he can do whatever he wants. The Bible says you're either a slave to sin or a slave to righteousness. Jesus owns me. This has nothing to do with, oh, good for you, Angela, glory, glory. No, no glory to me. All glory to God. I didn't want to be a preacher. And there's many times I don't want to be a preacher now. That I would much rather be on a honeymoon for like five years. <laughs> You know, that's just me. Okay, so Jeremiah didn't want to be a preacher either. Okay, God told him he couldn't get married. God has not told me that. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so I'm believing he's going to walk through the door in a minute. That's where my faith is. Y'all be in agreement. Okay, hey! Gosh, love you. Okay, just kidding. Um, he's probably not coming today. But um, Jeremiah cried a lot. He really did. Matter of fact, he said, I cursed the day I was born. So I'm telling you that Jeremiah had a relationship with God. Him and God talked a lot. He complained a lot to God. And God understood his humanness. But he still required that he preach. Now, I'm going to give you um, one more scripture about Jeremiah. This is where he complained. Oh Lord, you induced me. And I was persuaded. You are stronger than I. And have prevailed. I am in D-E-R-I-S-I-O-N daily. Yeah, that's the word. 
Everyone mocks me. Now, when I was reading this earlier, it made me think of teenagers. And then I'm kind of a teenager. I refuse to grow up. So, like, we're, you know, I don't want to grow up. Maybe you don't either. Um, so, everyone mocks me. When we go through stuff, do we not say that? Oh, God, every, you know, everyone hates me. I go through that sometimes. I'm like, ain't nobody on Facebook care. And I just had 10 people like my last post. <laughs> but that's the devil messing with me. Come on now, somebody. <laughs> For I spoke and I cried out. I shouted violence and plunder. He's a drama king. I'm a drama queen. Okay. Because the word of the Lord was made to me, a reproach, and then that D word again daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. Let me explain what that is. When you become a Christian and, and you get filled with the Holy Ghost and fire... Because there's a baptism of water and then there's a baptism of the Holy Ghost and then a baptism of fire. And I just pray fire over each and every one of you. Like that's like what keeps me going is the fire of God that's within me. Like God put it there. And even, even when I try not to quit preaching, like God will bring something across my path to tick me off and I'll go, man, I really want to preach against this right now. Or you know what I mean? Like he'll bring a need. And how many have you ever heard about people wanting to commit suicide? And right before they jump off a bridge to commit suicide, uh, somebody else is like uh, wanting to commit suicide and like, hey, don't kill yourself. And it's like, but you were going to kill yourself. And then, you know, somebody else's life is saved because of a need. You know what I mean? I don't know if I said it right, but anyway, you get the point, like, two people can't be suicidal on the same bridge. You get what I'm saying? Come on, somebody's going to win. Go Jesus. So anyway, uh, he says, I, I like this, because again, Jeremiah, he might have been a wine, wine bag, but he was a... Uh, he was God's preacher, you know. He was his prophet. And uh, he says, But the Lord is with me as a mighty awesome one. Even after all that complaining, saying, God, I didn't want to be your preacher. But your fire inside of me is so real. This word of God, when it gets inside of you, it's so real. It changes you. Why do you think China outlaws this Bible? You can't bring this Bible into China. Why? Because it's powerful. Jesus is a revolutionary. That's why people killed him. Because uh, people were upset that people were following this man. He was starting a revolution. And, and, and people didn't want him coming in and changing stuff. They didn't like his authority and his power and his influence. But the Lord is with me. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and will not prevail. Uh, they will be greatly ashamed and they will not prosper. And then so on. And then he talks about it. And then he says, curse be the day I was born. So, you know, you can have bad days serving God. But even in your worst days where you want to jump off a bridge or... You know, say I'm never preaching again. I've said probably 50 legit times, maybe 100. I'll, I'll never preach again. And there's sometimes I've, I've, I've done it maybe two times on Facebook. I'll never preach again. I quit. And people get so mad at me. So mad. You know? And it's like, well, you know... The hard part is they're not doing it, you know, and it's like, well, why are you mad at me for quitting if you're not, you know? 
And that's the part where you've got to go, you, you just, everything aside, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. It's about you. And um, Jesus Christ said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. Speaking about when Jesus would be on the cross, bloody, forsaken, up there in that final moment of being nailed to the cross, he had already been beaten. He had already been mocked and people laughing at him. His disciples left him. He's wearing a crown of thorns and on his cross was written, King of the Jews. King of the Jews. But yet he had to do it. He had to be that lamb sacrifice. So he's hanging there and it's not like the Catholic thing where he's only got the one cut on the side, okay? The Bible says you couldn't recognize Jesus as a man. He looked like hamburger meat. I've walked into a bar before with a cross and uh, took a hammer and just started bang, 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 bang. And then I stand there with it. Okay, now I got your attention. I'm going to tell you the greatest message ever told. Hey. And then go back to your margaritas if you still think you can drink it after I speak to you. Now see, people, I'm wrapping it up with this. People do not have a right to enjoy their sin in the presence of a Christian. Why? A Christian walks in a room, it's like a, a light switch goes on. And all the people go, ah. They don't like that light. If somebody's walking in darkness, that light comes in. Well, I'm going to tell you what the Word of God says. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Now a lot of people love that scripture to try to say what I do is not right. Oh, you're condemning people, you're condemning people. But let's finish the rest of the scripture. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. So people that are not saved are already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness. They loved it. Basically, you could get a big black poster and put the word darkness on it with a big kiss print. Mwah! Rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone, now listen to this, for everyone practicing evil, notice that word practicing, evil hates the light. That is strong, okay? Do you see why I'm not a gray area type of preacher? You either hate God or you love Him. You either love the light or you hate the light. That's just where we are as people. That's why it's like we got to be on fire. We got to be fire. That's why Jesus hates lukewarm Christianity. Jesus said, I will... Uh, vomit you out of my, your, my mouth if you're lukewarm. That's why God wants us hot. So when we walk in a room, we change the temperature. We bring light and fire. But a lot of Christians walk in the room, there is no temperature change because they're just like the world. Now I'm preaching. Okay. Okay. Uh, Love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he that does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done with God. Does that make sense or what? People, you know, when I was 14, the devil told me I could not be a Christian successfully 
that I would never understand this book, but I'm telling you, the more I read it, the more I see, man, it is for a C student. It is for a D student. I mean, you can, that's pretty much plain. God makes it plain. And He wants us to get saved. Saved from what? Saved from the wrath of God. Saved. Uh, it's saved more than just being saved from hell. Saved from the wrath of God. Because the wrath of God is pointing straight at you. You have a bullseye on you. It's pointing straight at you. And if you don't repent, it's going to... It's going to get you. Because when we stand before God, the Bible says God will not let the guilty go unpunished. And the good news is we don't have to be punished. We can be born again and reconciled back to God through Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does anybody without closing their eyes right now want to get right with God? Does anybody right here, right now, want to say, I want to become a Christian. I want to get born again. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to repent of my sins. I want to, I want to make a public confession and say, Jesus, be the Lord and Savior of my life. Does anybody want to make that decision? The Bible says, choose this day whom you'll serve. Today is the day of salvation. Does anybody want to make that commitment? So every one of you know for sure that if you die, you will go to heaven. Can you say that? Or are you just going to keep thinking about it? If you're going to think about it, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I'll close with a, something funny. Uh, I called my aunt today, and uh, she said my niece was sat in the timeout chair recently. She's four, and she sat in the timeout chair singing Jesus Loves Me. And I just thought that was adorable. <laughs> because, you know, Jesus sat me in the timeout chair many times while I was in Bible school, and that's the only tune I could think of myself. God wants us to be like children. Just trust Him. Thank you.